GeoGrid and GeoGrid placement. It's super important that whenever you're installing GeoGrid, you know which direction of strength the GeoGrid is. Is it stronger this way or is it stronger this way? If you didn't know, if you didn't read on the package, you don't know now. When you're placing GeoGrid, you want to make sure that you inset it on the block. You don't want to be overhanging like we did for this example. There's no amount of utility knives that you can use and go through to cut this off of the concrete after the fact. We've had guys try to burn it off, what a mess. You want to make sure when the engineer specs out a certain GeoGrid, they're going to make sure that you have room so that it doesn't show on the front of the face. The other thing you want to watch out for is overlapping GeoGrid. When you overlap GeoGrid, grid is slippery, grid on grid. You never want to overlap GeoGrid for a couple of reasons. Number one, you worked really hard to get your, all of your block nice and level. If you overlap this grid on grid, what's going to happen to the next block? It's going to start to tip on you, right? So you want to make sure that it's tight to each other with your grid, but that it's not overlapping. The other thing, sometimes it's unavoidable that you might need to overlap your geo grid. Maybe that's spec because it's an outside curve, right? So as this grid goes back, this grid's going to overlap at some point. So a way, to over, a way that you can undo this is by slightly deflecting either the left side or right side up or down from each other so there's at least three inches of soil in between. What that's going to do is make sure that you don't have an overlapping grid that's going to be slippery and it's going to make sure that it's a stable soil condition. Another good tip once we found the direction of strength of our roll is we're going to take and we spray painted this edge. This happens to be our VersaGrid 3.0. So we know the direction of strength is in the roll. So if an uh, engineer specced out 10 foot grid lengths, we're going to roll this out, right? We're going to take the roll, we're going to roll it out, and the edge that has that orange marker on there, we're going to know that's our direction of strength. We already know that for sure. Another tip with GeoGrid is that once you have your grid laid down, you're going to want to roll it in back to the specified length. And then you can place another block on top of it and pin the block into place. This allows you to pull the grid tight and you can also stake it into place. Now the other thing that you're going to want to watch out for is once you've laid down this grid, you're going to want to put soil on top of it and you're not going to want to run any heavy equipment until six inches or one more course of our standard unit. Once you have six inches of compacted soil, then, that, then you can start to have heavy equipment go over it. Until then, you're in danger of ripping the grid out of it. Finally, another tip on GeoGrid is think ahead. Right? You guys might be having this wall that you're constructing, but who's coming next? Is it the fencing guy? Because if it is, what he's going to do is he's going to auger right into your grid and again rip it out. Okay? So you're going to want to make sure that you've taken your job site into consideration. You might have to use Sleevitz or some other system to have it so that you've got a, a system in place so the fence guy is not going to be augering into your geo grid. Mm -hmm.